Cool. So it's 2.30. So a round of applause for Gildas and his talk about AI. Thank you. Hi. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you today. Uh, I, would thank, I would like to thank uh, Marty and Frances for uh, getting such a big room. It's amazing. So please give them a big round of applause too. Um, so I'm Gilda. I talked here uh, last year, um, and I'm coming back to this year. So I work at uh, Le Bon Coin in Paris, and today I'm going to talk about AI search with Go and TensorFlow. So, spoiler: AI is really not about intelligence at all. It's just about it's more about magic tricks, doing things that you wouldn't, wouldn't expect a computer to do. Uh, but nonetheless, it can do a lot of different things. It can uh, it can make your, fo your phone call uh, for you. It can beat uh, multiple pro gamers at StarCraft at the same time. It can make up, uh, invent some new, uh, some false celebrities, or it can swap faces in, the, in a very realistic manner. So today I will show you how you could use this kind of state-of-the-art model into your Go application. Um, all right, so the plan for today, uh, first of all, we'll review a bit some of the basics of AI and, machine and deep learning and machine learning. And uh, we'll see how TensorFlow and Go uh, work together. Then we'll see a first concrete example with image classification. And then we'll see how face recognition can work too. And then we'll see how we can wrap this up to, to make an image search. And then this will be the conclusion. So AI and TensorFlow. So it's a very good time for, for us developers uh, regarding AI because all the big players right now are, have a huge focus on, a, on AI. Uh, they are all competing to get as much traction as possible into the AI product. And what, what the result is is a lot of different frameworks that we can use and that we can do very cool things with. So Google released uh, TensorFlow, which can be used with Keras. Uh, Facebook has PyTorch, Microsoft has the Cognitive Toolkit, and Amazon developed uh, MXNet, which is used by other companies too. And you can also find very easily some uh, models online. So the same, Google, Facebook, Microsoft are giving away a lot of, a lot of models that are ready to use uh, for you. So let's see what are the basics of, of AI. So it all starts with one of, one of these little buddy. Um, so this guy is, is a cell and is, is getting some, in, some float as an input and releasing back uh, a different float as an, as an output. So the function usually looks like something like that, uh, but we don't really need to, to get into the details. So that's, that's the, the shape of the sigma function most of the time. Uh, but what is important is that uh, these guys can combine with some other ones uh, and start to make interesting things. So after a while, um, you can have some, some nice things happening. For example, for a, from a, a non-obvious picture, you can, you can guess the breed of the, of the dog. Maybe you can fail in some other uh, uh, example. It can, it can turn uh, Nicholas, uh, Harrison Ford into Nicolas Cage, or it can protect you from uh, non-safe for work representations. Um, so I want just to clarify a few, a few terms that will certainly pop up later. So architecture is, is the shape of a network. So that's a very important uh, factor in a network. Um, uh, yeah. And the next one, the, the one I will use the most is the, the model. So a model is basically an architecture with all the, the weights and bias defined. So that's, here we see the, the function we've seen just before. Um, and, uh, and the pre-trained model is the kind of model that you can get from Facebook or, or Google that already do uh, a function well. And then a saved model is a, is a format to, to export this model and to share it with, with some other people. So now TensorFlow is a framework for creating, training, uh, predicting, exporting, and importing uh, neural networks. So it's a, it's a C++ core. Um, most of the time for the training part, it's used uh, using its Python binding to, the, to its uh, C API. 
And uh, so that's using Python, you will do the, the you will do, uh, you will create the network, you will train it, and then you can export it to a, to a saved model. And the part that interests us is the, on the other side, once a model is trained, you can import it into, into, into Go, and you can run the prediction using the Go API. So in that talk, we'll really just focus on the Go part. Uh, so now let's see how the code looks like. So here is all the code you'll need. This is all the, the specific TensorFlow uh, code. So it's, it's split in two, in two different parts. So firstly, you load the model and you prepare the input that you want to give into that network. And then the second part is actually running the session, uh, giving the feeds and getting the, the fetches at the other part. So we can split this into three parts. First one is getting the model, get, getting the model and loading it into TensorFlow. The second part is uh, building an input and then feeding it into the, the, in, the input of the, of the network. And then the last part is to fetch the, the result and to interpret it. So let's see a concrete example with image classification. So image classification... No. <laughs> All right. Well, image classification is basically taking an image and extracting some labels. So there was a, a beautiful cat, Siamese cat there, oh. with some uh, with some uh, scores about um, about the fact that it's a Siamese cat. All right. Um, so uh, one of the most common uh, uh, database for this is um, ImageNet. Okay. Well, let me. Oh, cool. Oh. Well, some of them are loaded, but not all of them. Well, just two seconds. I'll, I'll move on to my mobile uh, thing then. All right. Is it better? No, not really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, well, anyway, so basically you have a, an image of a cat at, at the in, at the, as an input and then you get some, uh, some labels. So, uh, We'll, we'll need to add three more uh, steps before, uh, before actually running it into, into Go. The first one is to find the, the model. The next is to run it into Python and then saving the model. And then the two other ones we know about. Come on. Let me... Yeah, it's better. All right. Um, so to find a model, there is a, there is a website I like a lot. It's called Model Depot. There's not too many uh, models there, but they are very well documented. Uh, another, another good resource for this is, uh, is the, the one from Google, Micros uh, Facebook, and Microsoft. Uh, most of these uh, models are on GitHub too, so uh, you'll find a lot of interesting things. And please don't be afraid to look at some research too. Uh, they often come with some uh, pre-trained models. So, I choose the, that one, which is a quite simple one and quite light one. So, now I have a model, I can download it from it. It's actually MIT licensed, so it's nice. Um, so, we'll run it into Python. First of all, we need a few imports. So, this is based on Keras, so it's mostly Keras imports. And now, his, here is the, the Python code. So, it's quite simple. Uh, a bit like in the Go code, the first part is loading the model, then we format the input, and then we, we run the prediction. All right, so now we, have, we can run it into Python, and we can actually have the, the correct labels. So the next step is to save it into, 
into an export model. So we'll add a few, a couple of more uh, imports. And basically, the only thing you, do, you need to do is just to surround your code with a few more lines um, to, to connect uh, your session to TensorFlow and then to export it to, into a saved model. So now we have a, we have a, a folder with, uh, with, all, with everything we need to, to use our saved model. So, so now, um, one step that is usually simple is to find the, the input and output layer names. So if we, here we're using Keras, so we can just print them uh, straight out of the, of the model. It's one of the function uh, of the model. If you're not using Keras and if it's not documented, maybe you'll need to print all the operations and to just uh, look at all the names and find wh which one looks the most, uh, the, the most promising one. Or the, the last part, the last solution is to debug the, the Python code. So in our case, we're using the first, uh, the first uh, option and our input model is input underscore one and the output is prediction softmax. Now we need to, to format the, the input image. So here we can see the shape of the, of the input uh, uh, layer. So it's a 20, it's a 20, uh, it's a 224 times 224 image uh, with, uh, with three channel as RGB. So there's just one more function we need to apply it uh, to, to, the, to these label, to these uh, channels. Just a, it's just a simple function. Actually, it's just a, a mapping between, between a, a smaller uh, a float range. So, so this, is what, this is what we have, and we, we do it for every pixel. So this is how the, the Go code looks for that. So it's only using the, the standard library, um, uh, the standard image library, and then creating a, a TensorFlow tensor. All right, so now we have, we have our tensor that we can feed into our, into our network. Now the last part is to interpret the result. So the shape of the result is a slice of a thousand uh, floats. And this, is actually, uh, this, is, this actually corresponds to the thousand classes uh, there is in, uh, in ImageNet. Uh, so it's basically all the, all, the, yeah, all the kind of objects that we have and they are linked to a score. So usually what you'll do is to keep the 10 best results, maybe. So perfect, now we, uh, now we can get the, the output and we can find out it's the same as cat, uh, just the same way as we did with the, with the Python code. Um, so to wrap it up, yeah, so now uh, you can give any image from any source you want from your Go program and we can, we can get the 10 best uh, um, labels. So face recognition. Uh, I won't go into the into the code for face recognition, but I just want to give you the, the basic of how it's working. So the first step is to detect the the faces. So it takes a, it takes a picture of any size as an as an input, and it will give you back some some boxes and scores about the detections. So in that example, we we can extract five different uh, faces. The next part is landmark extraction. So, so the, 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 the shape of the input shape is also a, a square image of 112 pixel wide, and the output are 68 uh, landmark points. And they maps to some uh, peculiar uh, landmarks into the, into the face, and you can use it to straighten the, the face to, to improve the the, the performance greatly. And ne then the, the last part is the descriptor uh, extraction. So again, it takes an input, uh, an image as an input, and the output is a, is a 128 uh, uh, size slice of, of floats, which actually represent um, a coordinate in a 128 uh, dimension space, and what is g good about that is that you can uh, you can apply some Euclidean distance with it. So, so the, the Euclidean distance is the the, the most uh, common distance, uh, and um, 
And so this, this defines uh, some distance between faces. So the, the smaller the, the, score, the, the distance between two faces, the more likely it is that it's the same person. And yeah, it's especially nice, nice for us because it's a, it's a very lightweight representation. It's very fast, so it's good for search. Um, the, the models I've, I've used are from Face API JS, which is using TensorFlow.js. Uh, it's a very nice one because it's only uh, using TensorFlow as a dependency, and I really wanted to keep it uh, only TensorFlow, and not, not using OpenCV or Dlib. Um, so I had to do some, a bit of extra work on this one because the code was in JS, so I had to translate all the code from JS to Python, which was quite simple because it's almost the same function. And then I was able to save the model and to load it into my Go application. So search. Um, search is left an, as an exercise to the reader. Um, but it's, it's actually quite simple now. Now that we can label our, our photos, it's quite easy to just uh, uh, return, return the matching uh, photos uh, when the user is, uh, is querying uh, with a keyword. And, uh, and about the faces, once you have some distance between some of the faces in your database, um, when a new face is, is found, you can, you can just uh, uh, calculate the distance with all the other faces. And when you, when you find uh, a face that is close enough, then you can tell it's the same people. Uh, all right, so uh, the conclusion. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want, to, I want to point you out to my, um, to my repo where you can find all the models I've talked about. Um, yeah, you, you can find it quite easily, I think. Uh, what I want you to know, to, to do is, yes, to, just to try it. I, I made a nice, um, a nice uh, Docker image that can run just to, to try out to see the, the performance of this algorithm. Um, or you can use it as a, as a library. Uh, it's hopefully simple and uh, ready to use, but uh, please uh, feel free to, to contact me if it's not working or if you would like something different. And, uh, and also, I would like to encourage you to, to try new models. Um, so as, as we've seen, the TensorFlow and Keras models are very easy to integrate into your applications. And uh, yeah, you, sh you should try. It's nice. Other models, other uh, other frameworks will most most likely require some uh, conversion, which is still experimental, and it will result in some significant uh, extra work. And so, yeah, remember the the five steps to to use a new model, finding the model. Um, Finding the model is just uh, searching on, on Google, so that's the kind of thing that you're already doing. Running into Python usually is not a problem uh, because most of these models are, are well documented. Uh, saving the model is just a few lines uh, that's simple. Maybe most of the time you'll, you'll have some troubles formatting the, the input. Um, if the input is an image, it's almost always the same kind of formatting. So, so it shouldn't be too, too much of a problem, but if you start to play with sound or this kind of thing, maybe you'll spend some time because there is not much uh, Go code uh, doing that. And interpreting the result can be, can be very simple for some time and a bit harder at some other points. But yeah, the, the last result is always to, to just uh, run the, the Python co code step by step and to see how it's, do how it's done in, in Python. So it's not impossible to do. You should definitely try it. All right, thank you. That was all I had to show you today. <laughs> if you have some questions. Yeah, we have some time for Q&A. Uh, so if you have questions, raise your hand. And if you want to leave, please do so silently. Thank you. Any questions? Come on, questions. <laughs> okay, so just round of applause. Thank you very much.